Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I'm talking about how to find freedom in your life. So in that I'm looking at the relationship between ownership and freedom and then underneath that how to deal with feeling trapped. So if you feel really stuck in life, you don't see any options really available to you, like things feel really constricted and that's maybe how it's been for a long time. What do you do? How do you get out of that? And the idea for this video came to me from the comments section. Someone asked me, what would you recommend to someone who's working 14 hour days? And off the cuff, I was like, oh, that sounds terrible. I don't know, quit. And I had to really think about it because that's not my experience. I am self-employed and really don't work enough hours, but that's another story. But for today, I wanted to talk about what can we do short of like, literally practically changing your circumstance, like quitting your job, for instance, which is what a lot of people would advise today, apparently, which is kind of intense. But I wanted to talk about what can we do from within ourselves, like consciously with our own minds, so that whatever difficult circumstances we find ourselves facing, we still have a sense of freedom, the ability to take control of our lives, because that's so important. How do we get that? You could go on for hours and like books and tons of information on this topic. I'm just going to talk about the ideas of gratitude and ownership in the hopes that it will give you some practical tools for anyone out there who's kind of feeling stuck. So with that said, let's get into it. So I want to start by talking about gratitude and gratitude I feel like is often, I don't know, undervalued or overlooked. Like it kind of sounds cheesy. Like at Thanksgiving, we're like, yeah, I'll list the things you're thankful for. And it sounds like something you do with like third grade students draw a little hand turkey and write what they're thankful for inside. How cute. But it's a really important tool, actually, like hugely important. Psychologically speaking, you kind of can't undervalue the importance of gratitude for reshaping the way we think. Because by its nature, by its definition, gratitude is the act of like finding things that we are thankful for. What is something we appreciate? Where Where's the good in our lives? So anytime we practice gratitude, we're training our perspective to be more aware of the good things in our lives. Great. So obviously that can help us, like, let's say we're struggling with depression. Practicing gratitude, there are so many studies, it helps relieve depression. And then more than that, and this is what I think is so interesting, our brains can only track in one pattern at a time, literally. So we're either focusing on what's negative and what's hurting us and what's holding us back and maybe the things that we're afraid of, or we're focusing on what's positive. What are we thankful for? What's the good that's happened in our lives? What are the opportunities? How can we move forward? So that's actually hugely important because if we have a habit of focusing on what's weighing us down or what's heavy or how we feel trapped, we're not going to be finding opportunities. Your brain will not see them. I mean, they could be there. You won't really notice while you're thinking about negatives. So in a lot of ways, we will actually slowly over time build walls around our lives from within our own minds. Does that make sense? Whereas obviously, if you practice gratitude and you have a habit of looking for the positives and looking for the opportunities, you will stop seeing the obstacles. Like you won't be as aware of negative things happening in your life because because you're not looking for them. You can't do both at once. That's not to say that you can't be a very positive, optimistic person and acknowledge when something tragic or bad happens in your life. We're still intelligent human beings. You will take in that experience. But people who are really adept and really practiced at gratitude and opportunistic thinking will take in the tragic, difficult experience and look for the opportunities within it. That's actually, I think, one of the key differences we see in these people who are like wildly successful. It's because when they get taken down, they grow from it. It goes so far that there's now a concept called post-traumatic growth. So we can have post-traumatic stress disorder, right? Where something terrible happens to us, we internalize it very naturally. We go into a kind of defensive, protective space. We maybe struggle with a lot of fear because this negative thing happened to us. It makes sense, but it doesn't have, it's crazy. It doesn't have to be that way, not necessarily. People who have a very different mindset can take a very painful traumatic experience and grow from it. And any of us can do this, even with our past traumas. It's not like you miss the boat or something. It's that we need to train our way of thinking. And, and let me be clear, I don't mean to undercut or minimize anyone's struggles or traumas or difficult things that have happened in their life. Like people go through hard things and that's not to belittle any of it, but the power of our minds is amazing and our perspectives hold so much power over the way we live our lives. So gratitude should not be overlooked. <laughs> like, I don't think I can stress that enough. If in your life, you're kind of feeling trapped and penned in, a very simple exercise that really like could make a big difference would be starting 
every day to like find three things you're grateful for or write them down is even better. Actively thank other people around you when they do you a favor or you notice a kindness. Start training those patterns because it will unlock your mind and you will start to train yourself to find opportunities, to find open doors, to find beauty and goodness in the world around you. Because the fact is we all, we all have both. Like we all experience both every day. Even if your life is like really, really, really dark, there's some there's some good in it. And even if your life is really, really beautiful, there's some bad in it, right? No one's life is perfect. Everyone has both. And we want to find the opportunities. We want to find the open doors. And we want to find what's good and beautiful and train ourselves to live in that. Okay, so that's gratitude. So powerful. And then with that, let's take a look at ownership. I did an early video on ownership and the power of it there. So you can check that out too if you want to go like a little bit deeper. I think I share more of my personal experience in that one. But the very simple concept is that taking ownership puts us in charge. So the act of complaining, it's a great time. I mean, I love to complain. It's, a, it's, <laughs> it's kind of a fault of mine. But the act of complaining is the act of giving over control. Like that is exactly what it is. Anytime we say, oh, so-and-so did this to me, then I am now a victim of what they did to me. I'm not in charge. I'm not in charge of the situation. I I'm giving over control and saying, well, I feel this way because they made me feel this way, which for one thing is impossible. No one can make you feel anything. They actually talked about that when I was studying theater. Like if you're doing a really powerful scene and you want the audience to cry, they would be like, just so you know, you can never make the audience cry. You could do an amazing scene, but you have no idea what's happening in their lives. They may or may not cry. Like, and it was just a little ego check for us because we were like, man, if I do a really good job, they'll cry. And they were like, they might cry. They don't have to. They're free people. Um, and the same thing applies for us. Whatever someone does to us, we choose how we respond. And that's so important. And it's so empowering. It's easier to give it over and say, well, I don't want to be in charge of this right now. It's much easier not to. You know, it's the Spider-Man principle. With great, with great power comes great responsibility. I mean, literally, if we take charge of our lives, then we take charge of our lives. And like the parts that are a total mess are also on us. And that's tough. It's not an easy thing, but I mean, <laughs> but it's a good thing. And if we want to be free, it's, it's unavoidable. You can't be a free person and be a victim. You are one or the other. No matter what your circumstances, you do have a choice. Realizing that and accepting it, which can be really tough, makes a huge difference. It's like this small way of thinking, but it changes everything. It's very expansive. So you can apply this in, in any myriad of examples. Okay, so let's say you, you let's say you hate your job. Your boss is super narrow-minded. They have no vision. Yeah, you can't do the work you want in this position. It's really tough. So you could feel trapped by the job because obviously you have bills to pay. But the fact is that you are choosing to stay in this difficult job because you believe it's better than not having a job or maybe it's better than getting a different job. Okay, it's tough. See, many times we have to choose between two hard things. And so we feel like we have no choice, but we do have a choice. It's an unpleasant choice because we're in an unpleasant situation. But we can either give up our ownership or take it and say, I hate my job and I am choosing to stay there. Okay. I, okay, you can choose to keep the job you hate. That might actually be the right choice. But now it is a choice. Like, it's a choice, like you're doing it yourself. And in taking that on, suddenly you have control of your life again. Your boss is not in control of your life. You are, you can quit, you can quit. And if you choose to keep this job, maybe it's for the best. Don't give over power to people who are difficult or hard, to people who don't treat you well. They, they probably aren't going to change. And for most of us, we're probably not about to like inherit a super large sum of money and have our problems go away. It's a question of whether or not we can find a strength and a freedom within ourselves. And how would we do that? Viktor Frankl is a writer and a philosopher who was in World War II. He was in the concentration camps. And afterwards, after surviving that experience, he's written books. He's written a lot about it. And it's amazing. He had this deep, difficult, like talk about a painful experience. Talk about having no freedom. He was literally a prisoner in a concentration camp. So the point was to break these people down and eventually kill them. That's why he was there. And he made like amazing use of his experience because the whole time he was in there, he was thinking about it. How can I find freedom in this experience? Like he was very active about it and he would watch the other inmates in the way that some people would really give up and die quickly and how some people had this strength and they could endure much more. And he said, what is, 
what's happening? What's the difference here? How am I supposed to face? Like, how can I face this situation? It's so awful. It's so awful. And so he has this quote. He has many quotes, but he has this beautiful quote. So punchy and so good. I kind of want it like on a poster in my room or like on a t-shirt. He says, um, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way. Yeah. And uh, I mean I love that. It's it's really deep. It's the last the last of the human freedoms. We live in kind of a tough society in a lot of ways, I think today, and certainly we live in a tough economic times, and I think for many of us it feels like someone is trying to take things from us. I, I know I've felt that. <laughs> I've definitely felt that. And I love what he says like like yes, they can take this from you. They can. People can rob you. People can try to ruin your relationships. People can hold it over you at work and try to belittle you. Like people can like hurt you and attack you and they can't take things from you. And if you go to a really extreme, like a crazy extreme, people can put you in prison, put you in a concentration camp. They can take your literal physical freedom from you. And he's saying there is one freedom they can't take. They can never take your ability to decide how to respond. No one can take that from you. We give it away. We give it away all the time because it's easier. But I think that's really beautiful and inspiring. I mean, talk about strength, right? Like, I wish I had that kind of strength to think that I would survive for a long time in some terrible place because I had this deep inner power. Like, that's what we all want, right? Isn't that who we want to be? Something I want to build up in myself. So that's what I had for you today. Honestly, it got a little more intense. <laughs> than I expected but the concepts of gratitude and ownership are hugely powerful they can make well they do make almost all of the difference in our lives so I hope that gave you some good food for thought I hope if you are struggling and feeling trapped in life that things get better for you that you're able to find some inner strength and of course I hope your external circumstances change as well but if they don't get some tools in your toolbox so you can face it face it with more courage and strength Thank you all for watching. Uh, of course, if you want to see more like this, go ahead and subscribe. That does help me out. I hope you have a beautiful day and a beautiful life, and I will see you next time.